Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So I recently picked up a Beta FPV Pavo 25 V2 drone. I'm a professional drone pilot so I need something that can carry a GoPro smoothly and steadily for indoor drone tours. Today we're going to find out if this drone can do the trick. First things first, let's put a video transmitter in it. As I'm sure you know, there are a ton of drones in this 2.5 inch range. I picked this one in particular because it's got a bunch of neat features about it. It has this vibration isolation mount for the FPV camera and the action camera. I think this is going to work pretty well because it's a little stiffer than they usually are. It also has these injection molded bumper guards. This looks a lot stronger than some other ones I've used like the Gephardt C25. I think these are going to hold up well in crashes. Another neat feature is this XT30 that is integrated into the top plate. I mean, this is a great idea. There's no more wires hanging around to get chopped up by the prop. If you weren't aware, this drone does not come with a video transmitter, so you have to put your own in. Uh, I've elected to use the DJI 03. I found it just gives me the best penetration, the best video. It's just my go-to. For some reason, when taking off this plate, there's one screw that's longer than the others. I don't know why, so just keep track of that just in case. I don't think it really matters, honestly. One of the complaints I have with this drone is it's really difficult to reach all the ports, especially this micro USB that you used for all your Betaflight stuff. It's just super difficult to get to. The easiest way I found to access it is to come in at an angle, I go in between the frame and the props, and you can't really get your fingers in there. You just have to kind of slide it in at an angle like this. It's not ideal, but it worked for me. One of the first things you need to do when you get a bind and fly drone is calibrate the accelerometer. So as soon as you plug it in, it's gonna pop up right there at the top. Go ahead and click that and get it calibrated. You basically just want to make sure that when you move the drone, it's making the same movements as the 3D model does. In my case, I had to reset the Z-axis as well. You might have to do that too. Make sure the green arrow is pointing towards your monitor. Before you can really do anything else in Betaflight, you need to connect your remote to the drone. So in my case, I have ELRS 2.4 gigahertz. Disconnect your drone from Betaflight and then plug a battery into it. After a minute or two, the drone's receiver should go into discovery mode. Uh, in my case, it didn't pop up immediately. I had to reset my Wi-Fi and then it just popped up right there. I'm not gonna go into a bunch of detail on how to hook up Express LRS just for the sake of this video length. There are already some great videos on that, especially Joshua Barwell's video. Mostly you wanna make sure when this webpage pops up that it says beta FPV, just to verify that you're connected to the correct one. Uh, once you see that, you're gonna enter your unique binding phrase to hook it up to the controller. I don't think it's really that important to keep it that secret, but it's probably not a great idea to let people know what it is. Once you type that binding phrase in, theoretically you should be able to connect your controller without any extra effort, which is one of the cool things about ELRS. At this point I've plugged back into Betaflight just to make sure my controller is working as expected. So I'm going through all the throttle y'all, pitch and roll, make sure all that's correct. I'm also going to go through all the mode switches and make sure all those work correctly. But that's one of the really cool things about Express LRS. Once you type in that binding phrase, it just hooks up by itself. That's pretty much all you need to do. At this point, I am fully connected to this drone. So just to make sure I'm gonna plug a battery in, I'm gonna connect the controller and I'm gonna do a small test hover. I don't wanna do anything too crazy cause I don't want to flip out, but it seems like it's gonna perform correctly. I just wanna verify that before I actually install a VTX. As you see right there, it's fully connected. So it's time to arm and do a test hover. It's probably not the smartest idea to do this on your desk. Maybe you should probably do this outside. And perfect, we have full control. So at this point, we're gonna finish installation. We're gonna put the VTX in, and then after that, we should be ready to go. I'm a pretty big fan of the DJI 03 system, uh, besides the price. The price is a little absurd, but the vision is amazing. It's really almost like looking through a GoPro. Beta FPV kind of makes it sound like you'll be able to switch your DJI 03 system from drone to drone pretty easily, but 
I found this was not the case. It was actually surprisingly difficult to put in. You have to do a couple workarounds. I had to disconnect the antenna, the camera. There might be a better way to put it in than what I did, but I, I just found it was kind of difficult to put in. The DJI O3 is going to be staying in this drone full time. In the bag with the front plates, you have four screws total. You have two short screws and two long screws. You just want to make sure the short screws go toward the rear and the long screws go toward the front. So here's another mistake I've made a couple times. If you are going to use an external receiver like ExpressLRS or Crossfire, you need to remove the SBUS wire from the DJI O3 system. You do this by getting a little pinhead and removing the yellow wire and the ground wire that's right next to it. If you don't remove this, you may have some troubles in beta flight um, where you can't get your receiver to connect correctly. If you're going to use S-Bus control, obviously you don't have to worry about this at all. At this point when I went to install the O3 camera into the frame, I realized that I can't get that cable actually through the frame. I believe that you're supposed to be able to take off the prop guards, but I wasn't successfully able to do that. I don't know if they're just super tight uh, or if there's a trick to getting them off. If you do know how to get those off, please by all means let me know because I never figured it out. So unfortunately instead I had to disconnect the camera cable. This is definitely not the ideal way. This thing is tiny and super easy to bend. If you are going to go this route you need to be very careful. I used a little safety pin to pry it off very carefully and I made sure when I reinstalled it I was very gentle with it. It's super easy to bend pins. At this point I'm also planning where I want the VTX to go and making sure that everything's going to fit properly. I'm also discovering that I'm probably going to have to take the antenna off too. Be super super careful with this part. Uh, if you do screw it up, I think a new camera is like $80, something like that, so just be very gentle. Now it's time to plug the O3 plug into the all-in-one board plug. Uh, this is really difficult to get to, so just kind of reach in there with some pliers, kind of do what it takes. It's going to take some, some finagling. I reattached the screws on the air unit earlier because I forgot that you're going to have to take these screws off in order to install it on the Beta FPV plate. So take all four off and then slowly slide that guy in there and reinstall them. I did have a problem later where these screws backed out and after a pretty minimal crash, I realized that two of these screws were gone. So tighten them as much as you can um, and maybe bring extra screws on flights. I'm not really sure if this was my fault or if this is a design flaw since these are such tiny screws, but it's just something to be aware of for flights. Make sure it's tight. Before you actually install the air unit into the frame, go ahead and plug it into your computer and do your activation. 
You might actually have to have battery power for this. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> so if you can't get it to show up, maybe try plugging a battery in. After you've activated the air unit, you want to install it into the frame. You're just going to have to do a lot of tucking and everything to keep cords out of the way. Just pay special attention that none of those cords go out where the props are. Uh, because if you if they get snagged by the props, that's going to be an issue. You're going to have to do a bunch of soldering and stuff, so just avoid that. We're getting a lot closer at this point. Almost everything is installed except for the LED. I originally didn't think I wanted to install the LED um, just because I'm not an LED type guy, but I'm glad I did. It uh, it actually looks really cool and I'm, I'm glad that you can turn it on and off. I tried to jam that plug through the frame, but it just didn't fit. So I found what worked best was to put the LED in backwards bring the plug up to meet it and then plug it in and go from there. If you try and go the other way, it's just not going to fit very well. Here I've made a mistake, so watch carefully so you don't make the same mistake. This 3M tape is double sided. One side sticks to the LEDs and one side to that brown piece. Uh, if you see the LEDs like that, that means you've pulled off the wrong piece. So pull off only the brown siding. Be patient with this part. If you stick it too quickly and you need to make repairs, that 3M tape probably is gonna hold very well once it tears off. So just try and do it correctly the first time. As you'll notice here, the default for the light is on, and then once the radio connects, the light turns off. So from this point, you'll control it with the controller itself. You can turn the light on and off based on whatever channel five is. So with everything all together, we're right at 200 grams, which is pretty nice. Uh, you're not gonna be able to stay under 250 unless you use a tiny battery. I did find that a Tattoo 450 Ma battery uh, will keep it under 250, but you get about three minutes of flight, three to four minutes of flight. It's not very long, and I can imagine that battery is not gonna last very long. Out of the three batteries I've shown here, I find that I fly with the Tattoo R-Line 850 most often. All right, and this is it. This is the very first flight. I've hovered it a little bit above the desk, but so far I've not flown it at all. So I'm in a parking garage. It's got a roof just in case we have a flyaway. And uh, I, this part's always nervous, but this being a binded fly, it should fly pretty good. As you can see, I put a GoPro Bones on the front. Uh, it's a little bit forward heavy, so I've balanced it with this battery. I'm using a Tattoo R-Line 850 mAh battery. I've heard great things about the Tattoo brand. It's my first time using them, so I'm really looking forward to trying that out. I do have to talk pretty quickly because I only brought one camera battery and it's at 10%, so let's go ahead and get this done. All right, let's get it. So I'm seeing that the country code is not updated, which I forgot to do. It's one of those things you always forget. Well, it's definitely forward heavy. Yeah, it definitely wants to fly fast. Pretty nimble so far though.
even with the camera tilt of like maybe five degrees, it's still itching to go fast. It's fairly quiet compared to some of my other drones. I'm using uh, three bladed props right now. I think they're HQ props, whichever ones came with it. And they have some boost to them for sure. I have used some HQ prop, uh, I think they're six blade, maybe eight blade. They're nice and steady, but man, they break easily. Definitely need to tune in my rates a little bit. I tend to like a higher yaw speed and a slightly slower roll and pitch, but that's just me personally. It's always nice to use the O3 system so clear so I think I'll go up a level since this is concrete we are gonna put this uh, gonna put the penetration to the test so good signal anybody on top no nope. still good signal Wow yeah still four bars that's really impressive. I for sure would have lost my uh, visual from the Cadex Vista. To be fair, I am right underneath. But I'm still at four bars. Yeah, that's impressive. There, a bit of a dip. Just a tiny one. This thing wants to rip, man. Let's see, we're at 3.6 and a, whoopsies, three and a half minute flight currently. So easily another minute, I would think, at these speeds. Good penetration. Oh, a bit of wind up there. Let's not push this too hard though. Definitely don't want to break it on the very first flight. Boy, this thing rips. Three point six volts still. Wow, this thing could just go forever and ever. Here's my little corner over here. It's always awkward filming vlogs, so try and stay away from people. So far, I'm pretty impressed. I'm not really putting this too much to the test. To be fair, I am around a bunch of concrete, so any small mistakes happen quickly. Could easily break the, uh, the prop guard, but I feel like this prop guard's a lot stronger than some of the other Cine Whips I've flown. And there's our low battery, let's bring it in. Wow, so far, really impressed. It flew really well, fast, quick, agile. I haven't quite put it to the full test yet. So 
There's a couple little adjustments I need to make tuning. I'd like it to yaw a little faster. I'd like to slow it down a little bit. So maybe that means decreasing the camera tilt. Uh, if I could find a way to balance it slightly better, I think it would be perfect. Uh, so initial thoughts, I'm really liking this. Okay, it's been a couple flights since the parking garage and I've made a couple little adjustments. I've changed my rates, I've changed the battery positioning, but today I'm really gonna put to test what I bought this drone for, which is proximity flying. So if you may not know, I live in a travel trailer, so I've opened all the doors and windows. I'm gonna practice flying in and out and flying close to things, and I'm gonna see if I can not crash into anything. Always need your coffee. So it's a little windy today, so those transitions from outside to inside might be a little difficult. That tends to cause a little movement in the drone, and this drone isn't the best at fighting the wind. But once it's inside, hopefully it should be good. It's gonna take some very fine detail to keep it from running into things. Okay, we have video, and we're ready to go. Let's do this. Here we go. So this is my first packet of the day, so I probably should fly carefully. Just get my fingers warmed up. Sometimes you don't really have that luxury. Sometimes your first pack has to be your best pack because you're there to do a job. Some of our warm ups can include going under this trailer. This drone feels so small at 2.5 inches. It's fairly small, but it's not like crazy small. Let's see if we can go this way too. So I like to have kind of high rates, even though I'm flying inside, I like to be able to react quickly. And when the rates are slow, I find it hard to to react quickly to things. Sometimes you just want to be able to dodge. A little bit of wind. Let's bail at the last second. Yeah, that wind makes things difficult. So this little guy does rip. Doesn't perform well against wind, but man, it is pretty fast. Those transitions sure can be difficult. And again, like I said, I have pretty high rates. I know a lot of people like to fly slow rates. I just like to have a really fast yaw speed. Most of your movement's gonna be yaw. So I understand if you wanna have slow pitch and roll, because you don't do much of those if you're flying inside, but you need to be able to have quick reacting yaw. I'll flash my rates on screen. Go through here again. Now this drone does feel really small. It really feels like a micro, even though it's 2.5 inch. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily consider a 2.5 a micro. I would consider like a, I don't even know what, 65 mil, something like that. One of those really small ones that can't carry a GoPro. But this is carrying a GoPro Bones and it's doing pretty well. Right now we are at three and a half minutes of flight. Whew, almost clipped it. We're at three and a half minutes of flight and we still have a, at least another minute. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Woo! 
Ooh, steady hands. This type of flying is great practice for indoor flights. When you have these tiny holes and you need to fly slow through them. That's great practice for if you're doing, for instance, real estate fly throughs, anything like that. Your gaps are probably going to be a little bit bigger. In this case, they are pretty small. You don't have very much room. And so far, honestly, it's handling it pretty well. We're at four and a half minutes. We're closing in on 3.5 volts. This drone is quickly becoming one of my favorites for sure. I really am starting to trust it for indoor flights, which means if I can trust it, that means I can recommend it. Again, I paid for this drone with my own money. Beta FPV didn't pay me to make this review. They didn't know I'm making re this review. So this is entirely my thoughts. And there comes a low battery. Let's come in for a landing. A <laughs> very terrible landing. So now that I've spent some time with this drone, what are my thoughts? I really like this drone, to be honest. I find it easy to fly slow. I find it easy to fly fast. Uh, it obviously doesn't do too well in wind, but that's just kind of the nature of 2.5 inch drones. I find that a lot of reviewers uh, take these types of drones and they just rip them outside, but that is really not what Cinewhoops are meant for. Cinewhoops are meant for flying close to people, they're meant for flying indoors, they're meant to not break things. If you want to fly fast, get a 5 inch. Just, you won't regret having a 5 inch, it's going to fly so much flat faster. This, however, is great for flying indoors, it just bumps off of things. Uh, I just think a Cinewhoop is the great way to go if you're going to fly for real estate, if you're going to fly indoors, if you're going to do business tours, all those types of things. There are a couple parts of the design I really like. I really like how the antenna is integrated in the back here. And some of the other drones I've had, I've had to zip tie the antennas to the arms. It's not a very elegant solution. And this is just kind of an all-in-one solution. It keeps things out of the way. I uh, also like this XT30, how it's integrated into the back of it. That just makes keeping wires out of the way really easy. Uh, if you're using a longer battery, you may have some problems with fitament issues. However, with this Tattoo R-Line 850 mah I'm using, it fits perfectly. It's a great weight and it flies for four plus minutes. You can easily get a five minute flight out of that. That's pretty impressive for a 4S XT30 battery. I love the vibration isolation. Um, I found that I need very little stabilization in real steady for the GoPro and the view never has vibrations in it, at least not that I've noticed. I think what that means is you could fly with the O3 alone and not have to worry about vibrations in it. So if you're wanting a drone where you don't have to carry an action camera, this might be a good choice for you. I have flown a couple times without the GoPro and you can get such long flights. I'm talking like seven to eight minutes if you're gentle on the throttle. And if you're flying with only the O3 and that's good enough for you, which it's good enough for a lot of use cases, then this drone makes a lot of sense. There are a couple things I'm not a fan of. One, you have to install the LED strip yourself. It doesn't come self-installed, um, so it's kind of messy. I'm not the best at doing those types of things, so it would have been nicer if they had installed it, but I could see if you wanted to save some weight just leaving that LED strip off. It's probably three to five grams, which at these tiny weights, that may make a difference. I'm not the biggest fan of how you put the O3 in. I think it's secured pretty nicely, but you need to double check your screws uh, often. You wanna make sure they don't back out because once they're gone, they're gone. You're never gonna find them. And these screws are kind of probably pretty hard to find. I mean, who wants to pay five dollars for a two cent screw just because you lost some. I'm also not a huge fan of how the antenna comes in in the bottom. This is kind of worrying me about wear and tear. Occasionally your drone slides across pavement, it slides across rough surfaces, and I would hate for these antenna wires to wear. These antennas are about $20 a piece, so they're not exactly cheap. I may try and find another way to route this, uh, but for now, it's just kind of open and exposed. It's not my favorite. Another one of the negatives is it is very hard to reach the ports. It's hard to reach the port of the DJI O3. It's hard to reach the port of the all-in-one board. Anytime you need to plug this thing into a computer, it's gonna be difficult. It can be done, but it takes a little bit of wiggling and you kind of need the correct cord to do it. The SD card slot on the DJI O3 is completely inaccessible. You really have to take this entire thing apart to get to it. 
So if you're doing a lot of recording on the O3, you probably want to leave an SD card in there and access all of your footage by plugging in a USB-C. Now that USB-C isn't going to be that easy to get to, but it's definitely way easier than taking the entire drone apart. That's one of the reasons I fly with a GoPro. One, for the better footage. In my opinion, I think GoPros provide better footage than the O3 does but also the difficulty to reach the SD card. You don't wanna take this drone apart every time to pull that SD card because after a while, things just kinda of get misplaced. Things break, wires rub like they shouldn't. You kind of wanna keep everything as together as long as you can. Once this thing's built, keep it all together. And those are pretty much the only negatives I can think of right now. This drone overwhelmingly has a ton of positives. Really, when it comes down to it, it's hard to go wrong with most FPV drones nowadays. Most of them are really good, and they only have subtle differences from drone to drone. However, this one in particular, I'm a big fan of. I can highly recommend it. This has been my first experience with a bind and fly drone in quite a long time, and honestly, it's been pretty pleasant. I've been really impressed by Beta FPV. All the things they supply, how this drone is built, it looks to be quality. It looks like I'm gonna be able to trust it for a long time. It looks like it's not gonna break, and it feels like that too, so. I'm a big fan of this. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll address as many as I can. And if there are enough questions about a certain topic, I can make a video in the future about that. So I appreciate you stopping by. We'll see you next time.